Drop. Good. The reverse retrieve is exactly how it sounds. Instead of the dog going and getting an object and bringing it to you, you're giving the dog an object and telling it to take it someplace. An example of that would be a water bottle to the trash can. So this is not, you know, something that like only a few dogs, can, all dogs can learn to do this, but they need to learn all the other stuff before. So if your dog doesn't know hold and drop properly, you know, bringing the object to your hand, they're not going to be able to comprehend what you're saying. And with that said, we have to teach Bear to drop an object and not into my hand. That's something completely different. So he has to learn to drop it into a receptacle. And this is how I teach all dogs to do this. I'll do this off leash with him. I will use an e-collar. If, if he's giving me a refusal and not wanting to drop it, I may hit the vibrate button. But when I first start doing this, the dog doesn't understand to drop it. They don't get it. They don't understand it. Drop to a dog that I've taught drop to is bring it to my hand and release it in my hand. Now the dog has to learn to like drop it like that. We don't want the dog dropping it. We want him to hold it and hold it firm. So when they first start learning this, it's just this and then drop, right? That's it. But now I need him to drop it into this, this container, whatever. It could be a trash can. It could be whatever. So bear here. No, here, hold. Sorry. Here. Bear, drop. You are awesome, man. <laughs> you are awesome. So, yeah, I know. You're excited. Whoa, settle down, dude. Sit. Get back over here. Yeah, you did it right. Don't, don't screw up. Sit down. Sit. So, before, when you first start training your dog to do this, one, you're going to be walking right up to the dog like I did. Within a couple days, we'll be able to cast him from that distance and he'll just go put it in. Maybe this dog, maybe this afternoon. But the dog will have it in its mouth and you'll say drop and they don't get it because your hand's not down there. So what you do is you just take the object and, and, and tap it so that it falls out of the dog's mouth. That's it. And you keep doing this over and over and you'll find you're tapping less and less. Now, you can also incorporate the e-collar too. If you know that the dog's sort of doing it and the dog's fucking with you, you could say drop and hit the e-collar. This, anything in the dog's mouth, when you hit the e-collar, it makes it taste terrible. They want to spit it out. That's why e-collars are very effective for dogs that eat chicken bones on the street because once, once they get the chicken bone in, your, in their mouth, if you, set, if you set it up right, and it's high enough, you start tapping it. They're not going to swallow it. They're not going to eat it. They're just going to have a bad experience with it. He's itching to work. Let's have him do it one more time. In there. Good. Drop. You're awesome. Another thing that's important is to teach him to do this. I did not do this off leash. We did this yesterday. And the first thing that I did was I put the leash on bear. So first thing, do your leash is your number one training tool. Are you having problems with your dog? Do you have a leash on it? Did you did you train it with a leash on it? Then you know, what do you expect? So I have him on a leash, and I, I'm pr I'm fairly close to the receptacle. I'm a few feet away. Whatever it could be, you could be right up on it. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll have the dogs so it's it's the objects directly over the crate, and I'll start out there. In other words, I'll be like here, and I'll make the dog sit in front of the receptacle, and then I'll have the dog hold it. Right, hold, drop, no, drop, good boy. But I start out doing that, and if they're not dropping it, then I'll tap it and make sure we get success getting it into the receptacle. This, this dog, a lot of dogs, they pick it up real quick. They like to do this as much as retrieving. So I'll have the dog, generally speaking, I'll have it back at a few feet. It all depends on the dog. Hey, bear, bear, sit. I have him back a few feet, I'll ask him to hold it. I'll have him on a leash, and I'll be and I'll walk him walk him up here. Drop. He's got this. He he has this. Let, let's let's see if I can get him to do it off leash. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop right about here. Now you might think that that's not that's not a big difference. It is a, it's a huge difference. But I'm gonna start making my way back 
because at a point I want to cast him from there. I'm going to tell him to take the object and put it in here. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to walk him up and then I'm going to stop walking at a point like right, like a foot before. Hold. No, hold. Okay, go put it in there. Drop. That was my mistake. I said drop too early. Here, come on. He might do this. Hold. Hold. Put it in there. Drop. Good. This dog is, I'm not, you know, it's, I was telling the owner, like, I don't want to say he's smart because that's a terrible description of any dog. But he is, he's, he's easy to work with. He picks up on shit real quick. But the older I've gotten, I say this more and more about every dog I train. That they're all sort of easy for me to train. It, it, does, it doesn't matter at this point here. You're good, dude. Hold. No, hold. Go put it in there, dude. Drop. You're awesome, man. Now I'm going to try it. We'll try and do it off leash. And I'm, I'm just going to cast him, tell him to go put it in there, and we'll see if he can, can do it. Hold. Hold. Go put it in there. No. Here, heal. You can do this, dude. Go put it in there. It's close. I'm not going to give him positive reinforcement unless he does it right. Get over here. So in this situation, what we do, bear, here, no. We put the leash back on bear because he's young, man. This is a year old dog and we, we build on success. So I know he's having issues with this. He just started doing this like last yesterday afternoon. I'm rushing it for the video. That's all this is. He will be doing this like a champ in like a day. Drop. Good boy, dude. You got this. You got it, brother. You got it. Good job. When you first start teaching the kennel command, you're going to want the dog on a leash. When you first start teaching your dog anything, you're going to want to use a leash. It's real simple. You just walk the dog up to the crate, and you might have to direct the dog into the, the crate by saying kennel. Say kennel as the dog is going through the door. If you have any resistance whatsoever, make sure and use the leash and get the dog to follow through going in the crate. So you go back and forth real, real fast like this, like here. Kennel, good, here, come on, here, here, come on buddy, here. Kennel, good, here, good boy, heel. Kennel, good, heel. I'm not even making the dog sit or, or you know, do woe or anything. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just having the dog go in and out, getting used to doing that. After a while, you could, if your dog is, is, is trained on its e-collar condition, you can also use the e-collar. Once it starts doing this, you can have it on a real low setting. Like this is an e-collar technologies collar. You're not gonna feel it until about 15. So to, to condition this, I might have it on one or two. So I'll say kennel and I might tap the collar. I might, you know, in some sessions I might tap the collar and say no when the dog's outside of the kennel, make it an annoyance. This is lower than a human can feel it. This is lower than an infant can feel it. I'm creating an, an annoyance to make sure that the dog knows that it's a game. It's a game and you win if you get in the crate real quick. So now we're at this point where we, I can do this off leash. He has never done this in the field. This is totally different for him, but I'm to the point where I can, He'll probably go in the crate. Let's see. Here. Fair kennel. Good boy. Heel. Come on, buddy. Heel. Fair kennel. No, kennel. Whoa. Heel. Good boy. That's good. Heel. Sit. So he's never done it out in the field, but he's doing it. I'm going to work him for a little bit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep stepping back and see how far I can get Bear to do it. That's it. But once I get once I give the command, that's it. He has to go in the, in the into the kennel. kennel. You could get a pretty good idea of like you know Whoa. how this dog functions by watching this. This is this is like very typical of an Aussie Shepherd. The dog loves to work. He's also part poodle. 
But I mean, look, he's just doing this. This is something that you could do with your dog. Every dog should know the kennel command. And then you can play a game with the dog in the house. You can play the kennel game. You could be in one room and send the dog off to the kennel. You might not even see the dog. The dog's not seeing you. And then you call it, call it to heal. And then the dog comes to heal, sit, and then you can send it off to the kennel again. I mean, we're pretty far. This is pretty far. This is out in an open field. This is not something that, you know, without, without work and conditioning, we get a little refusal here, but watch this. I gave him the back command, and he went in the crate. This is really important, this part of the video, because I start getting some refusals because I'm going farther back. But when I do get the refusal, I give him a back command. I cast him back. Watch this. Let's see if he does. No, he's going all the way this time. He went all the way this time. But probably on the next one, I'm probably going to get a refusal. I'm still trying to go back a little bit far farther. I'm rushing this just for the video. I'm knowing that the dog's probably going to screw up at a point, but I've trained in casting, and I can back cast the dog. So watch this. Look, see? Again, the, the back command, there he goes. It's not a bit it's not a big deal. This is this is fine. We're getting success here. Him giving this little refusal because we're I'm so far back is nothing. It's nothing because I say no and repeat the command. Give him the back command. Back kennel. Let's see if he does it again. Yes, he's doing it again. Watch what see my hand goes up? See how he runs to the to the kennel? It's awesome. It's awesome. This is compliancy. This is what I'm looking for in a dog, knowing that, like, yeah, he could go home. He's being compliant for me. You could get a refusal with your dog. That's fine as long as you say no and repeat the command and the dog is compliant. Like, if he doesn't go all the way, no big deal. I give him the back command and he finishes out. This is not a problem. Now, I think I do this maybe once or twice once or twice you know a couple more times and then I start moving up because that's how we're gonna do it for a while I'm just gonna do it at a shorter distance so let's see we'll get a refusal again it's no big deal I send them back but we'll do it at a shorter distance about half the distance that we're doing for a day or two and then we'll start moving back this guy will be able to do it at a thousand feet or something I mean, seriously, this is an awesome dog. He's a working dog. He's just young and, you know, trying to figure it out. So so I moved up a little bit, and now we're not going to get refusals. So, like, I'll do it at this distance for a few sessions, and then we'll start stepping back again. But this, this, is, this is an awesome dog. He's fun to work with. He's a real sporty dog. You know, it's, it's, it's perfect for his mom. His mom, I can see her right now with the frisbee hanging out in the park. Maybe a hacky sack. She had, I think I saw her in a tie-dye t-shirt. It's a perfect dog. He's, he's really good. Did you see how when I got real far back that there was this confusion? That he was, you know, give me this refusal. Like, that's pretty far, so what did I do? I went up closer to the crate to finish out, knowing that I would get success. Not that we weren't getting success, we were getting success. If you get a refusal from your dog and you say no and repeat the command and the dog's being compliant, that's this, that's fine. That's the criteria for any dog to, to be able to go home. Like a dog that has reached compliancy. He's being compliant, I'm just pushing him, you know, farther and it's just too great of a, a distance at this point. But by the time that he's going home, he should probably be able to, this dog will probably be able to do the length of the field. That's my guess. I, I've had this, trained puppies to do this that can do half the field. So he, he's, he's a year old. He should be able to do the whole field doing kennel. I mean, that's, I was pretty far back. I, I was pretty far back. So it's, it's really great to see that. I'm fine with the dog making a mistake. That's how dogs learn. As long as they become compliant, which he did, and he's not only becoming compliant, I'm using casting, and he's casting. Here's an example of casting. This is right and left casting. He was We were back casting in the field. 
Okay. That's where you raise your hand and the dog goes Set. in a backwards motion. This, if if I use my, my right arm, he's going to go right. Forward. If I use my Set. left arm, he's going to go left. Good. So Good this boy. is casting. Set. This is another thing that if your dog is trained, you can... Over. You can drill your dog with this. It's you know you can exercise your dog. Also getting, you know you're getting compliancy. You're using discipline. You're making sure that the dog knows that you're in charge. If if you don't do that, if you don't train your dog, there's a little refusal, no big deal. He's a playful type of dog. You see him when he can get a, get away with. But I mean it. If you don't train your dog, you get a dog, and it, it just, no, you think sit. that you don't have to sit. train your dog. You don't really care about the dog. No. Dogs yeah, are a pain man. in the ass, okay? So don't get one over. unless you're willing to deal with it. Or sit. send it off to get trained, over. and then it'll make it easier good, good. to no. deal with. See, we're getting a little no. refusal there. That's playful stuff, but he must be compliant. Yeah, this no. helps the dog over. understand He's Set. not in charge. This dog, all dogs are hardwired to think that they're in charge, but they're living in a human world, so they have to be compliant. Set. Doing something like this with your dog, it's fun for the it's fun for the owner, it's fun for the dog, and it, it makes sure Set. that your dog is a healthy, happy dog in the human world. Pretty good. This is a great Set. job. That was me doing a casting exercise with Bear. And casting is so important. Right now, we're training Bear to do a reverse retrieve. Without knowing casting, he couldn't do the reverse retrieve. What more could you ask for with this dog? Nothing, he's doing great. By the way, one, one last thing about Bear. Yesterday, I, I, the last day or two, I've been working with him with scent work and all the objects have been scented. This guy can find pheasant wings or anything that's scented in this field I can put them out here I put out like three or four objects in this field he had them all within a minute and a half dogs love doing this stuff if you if you have a dog and it just sits around your house maybe teach it the kennel game you'll have a much more responsive happy dog you're communicating to the dog or scent work. You could do scent work with your dog. You have to do something with the dog. They can't just be a couch potato. If you want that, then maybe a cat would be a better pet. But the dog, they have to work. So this would be a way, using the kennel game, that you could work your dog inside. Say it's raining, whatever. Maybe it's real hot out. You can have a kennel up and you can move it from one room to the other room and then call it to heal. You're a good boy, Bear. Little Bear went insane and just started like ripping my face off. I don't think he'd do it, would you, Bear? Barry, you're a good boy, Bear. He's a very good dog. Wanna go inside, buddy? I just had Bear in, the, in this field. I got a, a kennel out there and he was doing it from, I don't know, at least 50 feet. Look pretty good. Bear, let's see if he can do it from here. This, like, you want him going straight, but he's pretty good. He's smelling some poop right now. Bear, here, heel. Heel. Bear, kennel. Bear, kennel. No, back. Kennel. Bear. Bear, back. Kennel. You're fucking good, dude. Here, come here, buddy. <laughs> That's your dog. Your dog's fucking awesome. I don't know if you... Hey, heel, come on over here. That was, that was pretty good. Bear. Bear, kennel. Whoa. 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 Bear, here, heel. Come on, buddy. You did good. Good job, pal. Heel. Heel, buddy. Heel. That was pretty fucking awesome. Sit. But you're pretty special, dude. You are pretty special. This year, I had hummingbird feeders, and it was awesome. They, they showed up uh, about three weeks ago, something like that, and it was really awesome watching them. And now I see them where I knew that they came up here, but I, I never noticed them other than like I would have a video and something would, I'd be doing a video and something would be flying across. I'm like, is that a bee 
or is that a hummingbird? You're not gonna see them if they're hauling ass. You have to see them when they're at a hummingbird feeder or in a, you know, like a trumpet shaped flower or something like that. That's, that's when you see them. So having these work great, but they're coming down now. One, because there's plenty for hummingbirds to eat now. Some manufacturers of hummingbird feeders say, well, you could just make it less sugary as the summer goes along. That's nonsense. They don't need, there's plenty of water, there's ponds. Go get water hummingbird where you drink water. Something, something better than this. The, the, the problem is, is that if you have sugar and water, it's gonna create alcohol. Definitely, it creates poison. So you have to, you have to like uh, dump these out all the time, okay? Dump them out all the time. And it, may, it makes no sense to really be feeding birds in the summer. It was cool when they first showed up, but this is this is also another problem, and this could be true of where you feed your birds, if you do feed your birds, or if you have a bird bath. This is right here, this is a vector for disease. Not only would this turn to alcohol, but this is also, it's, it's gonna, you know, spread disease. So use them, sure, but like use some common sense and may, take it down after a while, take it down and keep emptying it out so that the sugar doesn't turn into alcohol. Because can you imagine, just a little bit of alcohol would probably kill that tiny bird. Birds are not supposed to have alcohol. They're dogs. It seems like humans, humans shouldn't have alcohol either. Trust me, I know. I haven't had alcohol in 25 years. It's not gonna be good for you. It's not good for you. It's definitely not good for hummingbirds. I'm gonna put these back up like next spring. I'll probably have more of them, but there's just no reason. And what, what do I wanna do? I wanna just keep emptying out the sugar water. It's a pain in the ass. But if, if, if you leave this, if you leave this up within a couple days, you have alcohol in that thing. Definitely. Probably less than that. Probably, you know, you start getting trace amounts of alcohol. It starts building up. There's a lot of sugar in there. So empty them out, clean them out, and take them down at a certain point. That's my recommendation with hummingbirds. It's like, have them up. They're great. Cornell Lab says that it's, it's fine. Just use common sense and know that, you know, it has to be emptied out all the time. And they don't need it. Don't be feeding birds when they don't need any help. They don't need any help right now. They're cool, yes, but the hummingbird feeders are coming down right now. Next spring, they'll be up and I'll probably have more, but remember that. Sugar water in hot sun turns to alcohol. Alcohol is not gonna be good for the birds you love, okay? So empty these things out all the time. If you are gonna keep them up, man, keep, keep changing it daily. If you're gonna do that, which I don't recommend. They don't, they don't need help. They don't need they don't need help right now. Just stay out of it.